Thank you so much, Kat. We're going to be continuing on that conversation in just a little bit. Right now, though, talking about something quite different. Did you know that by consuming too much alcohol, it can have detrimental effects on all areas of your health? But also, not only that, consuming a lot of alcohol also has an impact on your vitamin B levels. Let's find out more. This week, as part of our focus on vitamin B and a deficiency of vitamin B and the treatment thereof, we take a look at another group of people whose lifestyle choices or maybe circumstances may place them at a greater risk of developing a vitamin B uh, deficiency. And joining us again is clinical pharmacist, Professor Natalie Schilek. Do you see how the smile just lit up <laughs> um, when I welcome you? It's great to have you back, thank um, you. Professor. Thank you so much. Um, last week, obviously, you and I weren't involved in that discussion, but we were looking at people who have a... Um, a, a restricted diet, um, mm -hmm. and there are so many different forms, either enforced or uh, a lifestyle choice possibly, but how yes. could this affect your vitamin B levels and, and possibly lead to a deficiency of vitamin B? And thank you for having me back. It's <laughs> lovely to join you. We should also be in the kitchen next time. <laughs> but yes, there are so many different types of restricted diets, as you've mentioned. It could be, and there are so many fads, you know, or different fad, diet fads that's happening around us. But if you have a restricted diet, either you know you are not taking in any um, food from animals or different eggs or so on, so then you might be not getting the nutrients or that specific vitamin that would be found in that specific food group into your system. And then when you don't get that vitamin into your system, you won't be able to get the benefits from that vitamin. One area where, and maybe this is a, is a touchy subject, especially in a country that, that loves a, a, a little tipple from time yes. to time, alcohol and the amount of alcohol that gets consumed. Yes. We never want to advocate um, the use of alcohol, but it is a, a, a very prevalent lifestyle choice. How can that affect your vitamin B levels? Okay, so there's two um, aspects to alcohol and how it affects your vitamin levels. And it is that alcohol being a very lipophilic substance and that, you know, in other words, it crosses all of your membranes. The first one is it has two toxic metabolites. So that's the hangover that you feel the next day. And those two toxic metabolites increases free radicals. So in other words, it increases your inflammation. So if you look at the gut lining, your gut lining is screaming, and now it's inflamed, so you can't absorb your vitamins. That's the one I thing. I need egg and bacon and <laughs> yes. lots of oil. Ah. I need proper food. <laughs> and then the, the other one, you know, it really uses up more nutrients. So it uses more vitamins for it to be broken down. So you are using more vitamins, and now you're using more vitamins, but the vitamins that you have cannot be absorbed. So, um, so it does, it places a, a huge amount of yeah, yes. uh, stress on, but also it relieves a lot of stress in the process. I think a lot of people raise that yes. argument. Um, the, the difference between binge drinking and having the occasional drink, because we, we often hear, again, and this is not scientific fact, but this is something that is often put out there, is that you know, dr a drink every once in a while isn't actually that unhealthy. It can actually have benefit, a glass of wine or something like that. But either way, what are the, the differences between binge drinking, having a really heavy um, yes. drinking session and an occasional drink? So unfortunately, um, recent research also tells us that even having the occasional drink every now and again has the same effect. Really? Yes. So it might have, you know, when we're specifically talking about vitamin depletion. So there are studies related to, you know, whiskey reducing your cardiovascular profile or risk. But when it comes to vitamins specifically, I'm not talking about other benefits, cardiovascular benefits. The effect on your gut lining, the inflammation, we call it gastritis, still remains true. And if you augment that by taking caffeine, you are irritating the gut lining and your ability to absorb vitamins decreases, even with an occasional drink or with binge drinking, you know, going on a binge, you know, so it doesn't mean you must go out now binge drink instead of having the occasional drink. Yes. No, um, so no, no we make light true. of it, but this is actually really serious stuff. Is there any one particular vitamin B group that is more heavily affected by alcohol? Um, because of the absorption is affected. It's actually, you know, especially all of your vitamins that oh. goes through the gastrointestinal tract. But what is important is the depletion specifically of vitamin B1 you know, B6, um, B12, and the other vitamins will eventually lead to you having a depletion. You've got some store in your, you know, some storage of vitamin B12, but eventually you will run out of it because you won't be able to absorb it and you are using more of it 
um, f breaking down the alcohol that you are consuming. I'm not going to offer any judgment. I'm just going to say think about your actions and what you're putting into your body and what that could possibly do to your overall well-being and health. Rather, on the positive side, think about what you can put in that will help you to, to re-stabilize that balance, especially if you're feeling regular fatigue, tiredness, a lot of the things, uh, mood changes, so much of what we've spoken about. Uh, but a lot of food, drink for thought this morning. But, uh, Professor, thank you so much. Um, really, really interesting opportunity for us to, to engage with our own bodies, think a bit more about what we put in and ultimately what that means to what we get out of our system.